Okay. Welcome everyone. I'll uh, um, welcome to our September 7th meeting. Uh, it's the first one into the fall here. Um, all the kids going back to school. Things will be getting back to a little more normal. Lots of noise around the schools today. So um, anyways, I'm gonna call the meeting to order. Ask everyone to uh, place their phones on vibrate or, or shut them off. Um, remind council of the declaration of pecuniary interest if it arises. Um, declare it now, or uh, if something pops up later, declare it then. Um, we have minutes here from the August 10th meeting. If they're all in order there, I'll look for a motion to receive those minutes. Moved by Councillor Webb. Seconder. Deputy Mayor Giroux. All in favor of the motion? And that's carried. Um, we have one delegation scheduled today and it's uh, it's a delegation from the uh, county's transportation master plan with regards to the ORV use. Um, I don't know who's taking the lead there, but I'm imagining Jean. <laughs> I'll, uh, welcome, Jean. Uh, good morning, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak this morning. Um, as you've mentioned, our presentation is uh, with regards to off-road vehicle use on county roads. I'm just gonna share my screen um, and then I can walk you through the PowerPoint presentation and then be happy to answer any questions. Okay. Uh, is that on the screen? Yeah. Good to see, okay, great. Well, thank you very much. Um, so just before I get started, I'd like to introduce uh, the uh, co-members of the delegation. Uh, you can see Peter Nielsen from the uh, County of Peterborough um, and Diana Adley is with us as well from Stantec Consulting, our partners in uh, undertaking the transportation master plan update as well as the ORV, um, the ORV study. So today's presentation is really just to provide the uh, Towns of Council an update, <clears throat> excuse me, on where the study is at, um, give you a bit of an appreciation um, of, of how the county is going about making the decision with regard to the use of ORVs on county roads. Uh, we're going to discuss then our potential approaches for addressing ORV use on county roads. Um, so we've identified three different approaches and we'll, we'll speak to those in greater detail as the presentation carries forward. And finally, just, just briefly discuss with you our outline, our next steps, uh, which includes further engagement with the public. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, but before we sort of get into the specifics about the county's initiative, I thought it would be useful, useful to remind, um, and for some folks who may not be aware, of the overall regulatory framework that affects the use of off-road vehicles on public roads. Uh, the defining act is the Highway Traffic Act, which regulates ORV use on all uh, Ontario public highways. Uh, there's a specific regulation under the Highway Traffic Act that deals specifically with the operation of off-road vehicles. Um, it lays out the parameters upon which uh, someone could drive an off-road vehicle on a public highway in the province. And that piece of legislation works in conjunction with the Off-Road Vehicles Act, which regulates the overall use of off-road vehicles um, throughout the province, whether that be on public or private property, and sets out things like registration, vehicle dimension, safety requirements, matters of, matters of that nature. Um, I think probably as you folks know, um, on January 1st of this year, the province changed the regulation with regards to the use of off-road vehicles on public roads. And in effect has now allowed them as of right on all township roads. Um, municipalities, lower tier municipalities can pass bylaws to restrict or prohibit ORV use access on some or all roads and specify the conditions upon which ORVs can be used. But unless they pass a bylaw, it, then the um, use of ORVs is allowed as of right, as I mentioned. Um, it's important though to note that the regulation didn't affect the county's roads. It was not one of the municipalities that was identified in the change to the regulation. Uh, so the uh, legal regime that existed prior to the change on January 1st, whereby a municipality um, has to pass a bylaw, 
to allow off-road vehicle use on its roadway still applies in the county's um, situation. So ORVs can't be used on county roads at this time unless they're specifically permitted by bylaw. Now, when we look at the various sort of the state of ORV um, a regulation in Peterborough County, uh, all eight lower tier municipalities in the county <clears throat> were affected by the change to the legislation, which means that, that in essence, as of um, off-road vehicle use is on, allowed on all of the lower tier roads within the county, unless that municipality has passed a bylaw to not permit them. And so far only Cavan Monaghan has passed a bylaw that uh, prohibits the use of ORVs on roads within their jurisdiction, their roads within their jurisdiction. Uh, Duro Dummer has a bylaw that existed prior to the change in legislation that permits on two of their roads. So in essence, that bylaw would carry forward. And then there's yourselves, North Kawartha and Trent Lakes that have all passed bylaws that allow ORVs on all lower tier municipal roads. Um, so currently the county um, has um, a bylaw that allows it on 11 road segments within um, uh, under their jurisdiction. Uh, thought I would also note that uh, Asphodel, Norwood, Autonomy, South Monaghan, and Selwyn don't currently have bylaws. And from our discussions to date, um, there's some of them are waiting to find out the outcome of, of the county study to ensure alignment with their municipal regulations. Um, and the 11 road segments within the county are actually roads within, within your township currently. So there's no other uh, lower tier municipalities within the county where they permit uh, uh, ORV use on their roads. Now, in terms of um, reaching out to the various stakeholders and participants to date, um, we've been at it now for all, just over a year. Um, we've done two formal rounds of consultation with, uh, with participants and stakeholders and, and the public. Um, we kicked it off last year with a notice of commencement and an initial survey, which identified specific issues and locations in regards to the use of off-road vehicles on public roads. Um, we then conducted a follow-up survey last fall and into the spring uh, to get more information from the various participants on where uh, desirable existing routes for off-road vehicle use exist. And that is helping us sort of identify where the current demands are greatest and where they're um, not really currently being used as much. Uh, the Transportation Master Plan Steering Committee at its meeting in April um, also invited a series of delegations to make presentations with regards to their, um, their views on the use of off-road vehicles on county roads. So that was a, a useful discussion from a variety of different participants, both having uh, preference for and some not in favor of using, of allowing ORVs on county roads. Um, we've been meeting, we've had a meeting with all lower tier municipal staff at the end of June to talk about uh, specific municipal concerns or, or suggestions or preferences. Um, and that information has been extremely valuable to us going forward, uh, as well as we've also met with Hiawatha and Curve Lake First Nations to get their, uh, their input as participants in the process. Um, so what we've heard to date, and I'm not going to read through this particular slide because I'm, I'm sure you've heard all of the different views, both for and against allowing ORV use on county roads. Uh, but suffice to say, in some people's mind, it's a bit, it's a, it's a bit, can be a bit polarizing, both in terms of the good and the bad. Um, and I think that's one of the challenges here is trying to uh, balance those two perspectives and come forward with a policy and approach that works for the county and respects uh, all participants' interests and, um, and views on the topic. Uh, so what we did to try to hopefully make that process a little bit easier is presented to county council at the end of May, uh, a decision-making process that um, comprised six different steps. Um, and as you can see on the slide, we're currently in step four, where we're consulting with the lower tier municipalities, First Nations and the public. Uh, to get their input on the different approaches, which I'm just going to talk about in a second here, for the county moving forward with the uh, with the ORV use on county road issue. 
Um, so we're, as I said, we're in this stage now where we're trying to gather input. Um, we've been doing presentations to the lower tier municipal councils. Um, so we have a series still to do, which is going to take us sort of towards the end of uh, September. Um, and we're also in the process right now of setting up the next public information center. The notice came out end of last week uh, that it'll go live on September the 9th. Uh, and uh, there'll be an online uh, presentation available, uh, somewhat similar to this one, but a little bit more expansive to explain uh, some further details about the process uh, that the public can go and uh, get further information about this topic. Um, so once we get you know this sort of this stage, we work through this stage and we gather all of this important and useful feedback, and then we tweak and come up with what our recommended strategy is. We will be bringing that forward to county council um, through the transportation master plan steering committee uh, to get their their view and their position on, on how to move forward. And then once a preferred approach is, and strategy is selected, um, then the county in conjunction with all of the various partners on this one, because they're not alone, um, will move forward with implementing the approved strategy. So now I'm gonna take a few minutes just to talk about potential approaches. And in our minds, it was somewhat of, um, you know, sort of it wasn't, I'm not gonna say simple, but it was, um, you know, sort of an evident sort of three different approaches. Um, obviously, the county could take the approach where they allow ORV use on all of its roads, or they could take the contrary position where they would not allow ORV use on any of its roads. So we viewed that those are sort of the two ends of the spectrum for potential approaches for allowing ORV use on county roads. And then there's an alternative, what we're calling alternative two, that sort of says, well, you know, there may be select locations where it's more appropriate to allow ORV use on county roads. And there may be some locations where it's not appropriate given the nature of the adjacent land uses, the nature of the roads in that area, um, for some other reasons that, um, you know, that, that would factor into that decision. So we have this sort of range of three different options that we're carrying forward that we're looking at in terms of a series of considerations. So obviously the legislation, the regulations play an important role as to what is permitted and what's not permitted and the different types of conditions that can be put around the use of ORVs on roadways. Um, and then we're also looking at, you know, what are the benefits? Because there are a number of benefits um, to allowing ORV use on public roadways, um, you know, in terms of economic tourism, recreational, especially utilitarian use um, in a lot of the more rural areas of the county. Um, and then, you know, allowing them to connect trails and, and, and the like together. Uh, there are those some concerns that need to be addressed, things like safety, risk and liability, uh, the cost to be able to bring county infrastructure up to a point uh, where it would be safer to allow ORVs and um, the, the capacity of the, uh, the various parties as well as the roadways to be able to accommodate it. And then there are some other factors that we need to take into consideration like enforcement impacts to property uh, as well as the impact the infrastructure that we'd have to consider. Uh, so obviously alternatives one and three are fairly straightforward. They basically are yes or no. Uh, but alternative two would require a little bit more work in terms of identifying uh, the network of county roads where ORV use would be permitted. So in anticipation of, um, you know, and to help better inform the discussion around the use of alternative, if alternative two was the selected choice or the recommended choice going forward, um, we've done a little bit of work around, you know, what would a network potentially look like if the county were to allow ORV use on select roadways? So our process to come up with a network, or at least a conceptual network at this, at this point, and I want to emphasize that you know, there's been no decisions made yet as to which of the three alternatives we're doing, we're, we're developing the network for alternative two, in case it is the preferred alternative move forward, we don't want to have to circle back. Uh, so as mentioned, you know, we're looking at sort of this five step process where we've identified a series of evaluation criteria and factors. Uh, developed a database based on those criteria and factors, gone through a scoring of all of the county's road segments um, to see how they comply uh, and whether they satisfy the minimum thresholds for those criteria and factors. And then we look at a series of 
qualitative factors um, that impact um, you know, why you might want to allow a road in a particular location or not allow a, a certain section of road in a particular location, and then go through the process of identifying a conceptual network. Um, so to date, we've come up with this uh, conceptual network. Obviously, we're getting feedback as we go through the process, and it's still subject to further review and input if alternative two is the recommended alternative, but we are collecting feedback at this point in time on the, uh, on the network uh, that's, uh, that's shown. So there are still a number of key issues that are under review um, as we go through the consultation period um, and engagement with all of the different participants. Um, first and foremost, the extent and configuration of the network of alternative two were selected um, as mentioned, we still are, are working out the details of that. Uh, something that's come up in a number of different conversations around the topic of ORV use is the state of the county's road shoulders. Um, in some locations, the county has um, wide, wide shoulders or wide enough that they would safely accommodate an ORV off of the roadway traveled surface. But in a number of locations, the county's existing roads are not up to that sort of standard whereby there's a sufficiently wide shoulder to allow motor vehicles on the paved surface to travel side by side with the ORV. So have to look at, you know, is there, are these locations, you know, would they be sufficiently um, safe from a safety perspective that you could allow operation together? Um, or is there situations where you would have to actually upgrade the county's infrastructure before being able to allow ORV use on that road section? There's also no signing pavement marking or roadside safety standards um, or guidelines currently in effect in Ontario that would allow the, the combination of ORV traffic uh, with vehicle traffic. Um, the signs currently uh, are intended for the motor vehicles on the roadway. Um, and there are situations where there have been signs developed for bicycles and pedestrians, but there currently isn't anything for on-road ORV use. So that's certainly something that needs to be taken into consideration because as we know, signing is very important to conveying the proper messaging and direction to all of the road users. Uh, as mentioned, risk is, is a concern, um, especially for municipal entities. Um, so looking at different ways in which risk mitigation and insurance can be addressed uh, if ORV use is permitted. And then if there needs to be any restrictions or any concerns about enforcement, um, those also have to be taken in consideration, as well as the financial impacts for the county and the lower tier municipalities of permitting ORV use. So our next steps um, is to complete the lower tier municipal council presentations. So we're about halfway through. By the end of today, we'll be a good way through uh, the presentations. Uh, as mentioned, we are in the process of setting up the next online public consultation session which will begin this Thursday. Uh, then based on all of the feedback we gather through all of these uh, outreach initiatives, uh, we'll develop our preferred strategy and, and get that ready to present to the Transportation Master Plan Steering Committee and County Council. And our objective is to have that in front of them by the end of this fall. So with that, Mr. Mayor, um, happy to answer any questions. Okay then. Um... I'll wait till that goes back to the full screen here so I can see everyone, but uh, um, thank you, Jean, for your presentation. I am a part of the Transportation Master Plan Committee and uh, it has been lengthy and it has been thorough, I think. So hopefully that means some good things at the end of it. Uh, um, but the, the online, uh, the public survey that started on the weekend there, I did see it online and I'm sure we'll be putting it on our website so we can get some, all the feedback we need to hear. Uh, Deputy Mayor Giroux has been really involved with the ATVs in our township, and I'm sure you've talked to him. Um, it's been a challenging year for everyone involved with ATVs. Um, the last couple of years, actually, it seems to be worse than it's ever been as far as complaints. But uh, hopefully we can get this right and we can get something going here because it's some townships it's not as valuable in the county as it is to others. Um, and we've seen that with some of the delegations from North Florida and other townships that are trying to get this out there. I'll open it up to council here for any questions. Uh, um, any questions from council or comments? 
Councillor Hart or Councillor Webb, go ahead. Uh, I just had a question um, in terms of, of the conceptual map that we had here. I know it's um, it's not very detailed or small, but when I look at the trails that you have in purple, uh, we have a trail that runs through Havelock, like kind of right through the town, I take it, which would be George Street and out the other side. And my only question is when I look at other towns on the map, all the trails seem to stop kind of when they get to their town or they're going through their town on a main road. And my main issue with it here in Havelock is that when they come off 48 uh, from the country, from the cottage country, I guess, and hit town, they're driving through basically the downtown area of our town. And I guess what I'm saying is, I, and I don't know if you could do this, but to me, it would be better off if they were shifted down to the highway and went down the highway than a whole bunch of them driving down, whether it be George Street or cutting through our Matheson property. That's, and I'm just wondering why, when I look at other towns, like I said, I don't see routes through their towns, but we have a route directly through the middle of our town. So I'm just wondering why that is. Okay, Gene, uh, if you could answer that. Yeah, certainly through, through you, Mr. Mayor, to Councillor Webb. And uh, I'm gonna ask Stan Adley from Stantec to assist me in answering this one. Um, Dan was a little bit more um, involved in establishing the routing on the map. So I'll, maybe I'll ask Diana to, uh, to give us her, her response. Thank you, Jean. Um, good morning, everyone. Yeah, so the, the network doesn't actually travel right through uh, the town. What we have uh, conceptually shown is it um, stopping um, before the town and going around and the intent is to travel the trail network that you've mentioned. Okay, so we're, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. And it's just, it's really small on the map. So if we came off 48 um, heading west, I guess, where would, where I guess on the east side of town would that, where would, what trail would we be connecting into? Would it be the Matheson property? Because if so, uh, council's passed a bylaw that there's no ATV use allowed in the Matheson property. So, I mean, that's kind of what I'm getting at. Like, where does this trail go? I think it's just showing the county roads, uh, Art, but uh, um, as far as any of our trails, we haven't got it. It's a dead end right there right now. Yeah, maybe if that can help, Councillor, I'll ask Mr. Nielsen from the county to, uh, to respond as well. Uh, thank you, Jean. Uh, through the chair, um, that's that's valuable information uh, provided by Councillor Webb about the bylaw prohibiting uh, access to the Matheson property. That's something I wasn't uh, personally aware of. Uh, so that kind of detail we need to bring forward uh, as, as part of the uh, conceptual map. But at this time, um, ORV use on George Street is not. Uh, at the County Road 48, that's not, not permitted under the current county bylaw. Uh, and uh, we want to work closely with, with the township on establishing a route that can be accommodated to access uh, facilities within the village area in particular. There's a lot of attraction to the, the west end of the village in particular. So how, how, how can we accommodate, how could we accommodate traffic to get to that location um, with, without disrupting disrupting uh, the community along uh, George Street in particular. So uh, that type of detail we hope to uh, hear through the uh, round of consultation that's coming up uh, on, on what could potentially be accommodated. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you for that, Peter. And just, just so you know, um, the bylaw has been passed, but um, the Matheson committee that is working on that project is uh, currently working at trying to find an alternate route um, through there where we could connect it. Just at the moment, we're redoing the trails. We're trying to keep bikes out of there and away from people who are using the trails as walking trails, obviously. But um, yeah, moving forward, um, it would be our goal to find an alternate route, but at the moment we have not. So just, just to let you know, and as you said, I guess you didn't know that as of now. So thank you very much, Peter. Okay, Councillor Ellis, do you have a question or comment? Comment and question. Uh, uh, first of all, I'd like to recognize uh, all the participants 
participants today and your transportation master plan and the details that have been put in it. You've clearly done your homework for the pluses and minuses of, uh, of the off road. Um, just a couple of comments. You made a comment about the county um, having to look at some of their road structures for shoulders. Um, in our township, our township roads rarely have a shoulder that an ATV travels on. And my experience um, with ATVs, I would much prefer to see an ATV on the road rather than trying to control it and throwing stones on a shoulder. Um, so just a bit of uh, information about that. Um, I think also in the, our experience here in our township, the places where we used to be restricted uh, usually cause more problems because people are trying to get from point A to B and they got to cheat to get there. So um, I would, I would kind of like the county to look more at um, our access to the villages, the access to um, the, tr the trail system itself, uh, two county roads and the more county roads that are opened up as our township have done, I think that tries to uh, eliminate some of the problems. So we're always gonna have problems as Mayor uh, Martin indicated, we had more this year, but it's, it's uh, as usual, um, a small handful that's creating problems for us. The average group that's out uh, on an ATV, ATV run are not the problem. But um, utilizing your county roads more, as in County Road 46, it's an access point to get into the village. And that's what a lot of the traffic is trying to do. They're trying to get in to get gas, they're trying to hit the, the restaurants and so on. So um, that's one of the things I think would be a, a plus. The more, more county roads that are open, giving access, access to the trail systems, as well as the, the village um, to utilize what we have there. So that's just a couple of things that I wanted to comment on. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Councilor Ellis. Um, is there any other questions or comments with regards to this? Deputy Mayor Giro, go ahead. Through you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you, Gene and uh, Peter, Diana, for your presentation this morning. Excuse me. <clears throat> it's, uh, it's you've done a lot of homework. We've got a long way to go yet. I'm very interested in the final outcome because uh, of the work that you're doing. I don't think we're going to satisfy everyone. Uh, the framework throughout Ontario when it comes to off-road vehicles is particularly um, from the county of Peterborough East is a patchwork of different, I would say different rules and regulations. That being said, Northumberland County, I mean, our nearest neighbor, uh, Trent Hills, there's no restrictions whatsoever in the town of Camelford, in the village of Camelford. Uh, uh, they're allowed anywhere on any of the streets. So it depends on where you are. <clears throat> My greatest hope is that we can do this safely for all involved without getting into um, uh, a great deal of, of uh, monetary um, money on the behalf of the, the taxpayer when it comes to liability. Um, I think the approach that if we can, as Councillor Ellis mentioned, if we can even little by little bring our county roads up to the expectation or to the regulation where the ATVs are allowed. For instance, 504, um, that would be a great piece of network for the uh, off-road vehicles to get from one jurisdiction to another. But at the present time, that road portions of it aren't satisfactory. So I, th I think it's an encompass upon us all to work hard and uh, figure this out. So 
thank you for your presentation and I'm, I'm, we're all looking forward to the final result. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, so it's not gonna be simple to come up with a, like, like Deputy Mayor Drew said, we're not gonna please everyone. I think even our bylaw is going to need some work as far as if I'm not mistaken, we have that they must ride on the pay are on the, the gravel shoulder. If that's what it used to be anyway, because it did concern me when they're putting these bike lanes in that we wouldn't be able to pave our shoulders because uh, we would eliminate the ATV. So there's some little things like that. I think even HBM has to look at um, if we prefer them to ride on the pavement. Um, and we want bike lanes beside our, our county roads or on the side of our county roads, um, we're gonna have to look at our bylaw and make sure that we, uh, that we work that out. But uh, um, there's lots to look at here and I'm sure you're gonna get lots of comments here on the online survey. And hopefully when we put that all together, we can come up with a solution that works for everyone. So um, is there any other questions for um, these people with the sand tech? Seeing none, I thank you everyone for uh, this presentation and I look forward to the final copy. So um, I'll look for a motion to receive this delegation. Moved by Councillor Webb, and seconder. Second the motion, Mr. Mayor. Seconded by Councillor Ellis, all in favor? And that's carried. Thank you everyone and have a good day. Thanks, Peter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next we're going to move into uh, staff reports for information. We have two reports there. Is there any questions with regards to this? If there isn't, I'll look for a motion to receive these reports. Look for a motion. I'll move that report. Okay, moved by Deputy Mayor Durow and seconded by. Councillor Ellis. Um, any questions, comments? All in favor? And that's carried. Thank you. Our next uh, item on the agenda is staff reports with follow up action. Um, the first one on here is uh, sorry, I'm just catching up here. Uh, on, uh, Peter, welcome. Um, this one that we, we love to get every year. Yes, good morning, Mayor Martin and members of council. Um, yes, the purpose of this report is to seek uh, council's approval to enter into a contract with MCON for the connecting link in the, the winter maintenance season. So I'll, I'll look for a motion to uh, move that recommendation before we open it up. Moved by Councillor Pomeroy. Do I have a seconder? Seconded by Deputy Mayor Durow. Questions or comments? Councillor Ellis and Councillor Ellis and Deputy Mayor Durow. I'm just wondering this contract. I know we talked about this in previous years. Um, so there, has this ever been re-advertised? Through you, Mayor Martin, I can review that. Uh, I'm not aware of that at this time, Councillor Ellis. Uh, we can review that. Uh, MCON is the current one that uh, is looking after Highway 7. So, uh, but I can review that and see if it ever has been uh, put out or advertised. I appreciate that. I know uh, the reason I asked the question, it was the concerns about the condition of our section of the highway last year. Okay. Deputy Mayor Drew, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Peter, um, I wasn't fully aware that where our connecting link, I was always under the assumption it was from near the railroad tracks down to the other end of town, but there, it actually goes to the railroad tracks or beyond. Is that correct, Peter, or am I blowing smoke here? No, through you, Mayor Martin, it is just west of the railroad tracks at the west end of town. Yes, it's just on the west side of the railway tracks. If, uh, if you're out in the vehicle and driving on Ottawa Street, there is little wee uh, triangles with uh, yellow with black lettering that says CL. That's exactly where this starts and stops. And where does it stop, start and stop then, Peter, 
on uh, uh, County Road 30 then, or Concession Street? On Concession Street, it is um, the best way to describe it is the railway yard entrance. It is at pretty much right at the north side of the railway entrance. So any work that's done at the crossing, that's up to CP rail, but any work that is done involved with the paving around the rail or beyond the rail is this be up to the municipality? Yes, so the connecting link corridor extends south uh, past the tracks uh, to that entrance on the railway, but then the railway, uh, they have their own corridor too going through there. It's just yeah. like, um, so they have, that's their responsibility to maintain their um, right away. Yes. All right. Thanks for that, Peter. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. So Peter, in the, in the past, we've spent a lot of time on this. We, we explored a lot of different options and um, looked at getting someone else to do our section and none of that worked out. Um, I just wonder, and it's a public, it's public information. So when we look at this and if it's a kilometer of road or I, I think it's just over a kilometer, if I'm not mistaken, um, I'd like to know what, what MCON charges for per kilometer of road for the rest of the province and see how this works out. Are they just doing a simple, you know, is it $26,000 a, a kilometer and they're charging that right across the province or are they, are we different from others? It would just be, interesting to find out you know how much work goes into this bid or if it's something that's the same right across i know it sounds petty but uh it seems like a lot like if they're doing thousands of kilometers of, of uh highway um and they're getting this kind of money for it uh it'd be interesting to to see um how this works out that's just you know without putting too much work into it i'm sure they have a per kilometer uh snow snow plowing price and I just wonder how we fit in there or do they are they doing something different because really that's all it is they're not changing any any other the way they do things between Peterborough and and uh, Ottawa basically they're just uh, um, it's the same process so um, I'd just be interested to know because twenty six thousand dollars I like I know very can Remember, this number just keeps going and going and going. I, I don't know if I've been around too long, but I remember when it was like 16,000 or 17,000. So, um, and that wasn't that long ago. So if you could check that out, Peter, if they have a price per kilometer, but uh, Larry, did you have something? Yeah, just for clarity, the, uh, how far east, Peter, do they go uh, from our village of Havelock? I, I don't. Yeah, unless they've changed it, uh, they go down to uh, County Road 50. That's their turn. Okay, so they're just adding through, as well as on County Road 30. Yes, that would be the County of Peterborough that plows County Road 30. Okay. So yeah. When they come in on 30, do they come right into our village? Uh, MCON, yes, they come, they just travel Highway 7 on Ottawa Street. Uh, east and west, uh, and the Peterborough County cleans up the intersections uh, as they come on and off of County Road from County Road 30 and 46. Okay, thank you very much for you. Kind of a bit of a dog's breakfast there, but sometimes, as Mayor Martin has indicated, um, the costs associated with some of this snow removal or winter maintenance is a little hard to swallow. It'd be interesting to see maybe. You're the new guy in the block, so to speak. Maybe uh, you have some better ideas. Yes, yeah, through you, Mayor Martin. Yes, I'll, I'll see what I can uh, come up with, uh, Councillor Ellis, but I can reach out to MCON and see if there is a standard price per kilometer. Is that how they work it? And I can also reach out to some of the neighboring municipalities with the connecting link as well to uh, get some more uh, background and research. Excellent, thank you. Yeah, because our, our, as much as they go right to County Road 50, we're only paying from basically the flashing light at the east end of town and the railway tracks at the west end of town. Um, so they're not changing any process or anything. I hope we're not paying right to County Road 50, but it's supposed to be like a kilometer of trail, our trail, I keep calling it. 
um, kilometer of road. So um, hopefully we're not getting charged for that extra couple of kilometers. So anyways, we'll leave it at that. Um, so we do have uh, a recommendation here and I have a mover and a seconder. Is there any other questions or comments? Okay, all in favor of the motion. And that's carried. Thank you, Peter. Uh, the curbside garbage uh, collection extension, contract extension. Yes, through you, Mayor Martin, to members of council. Uh, the purpose of this report is to obtain council's approval for a one year extension to the current agreement with Waste Connections for curbside garbage collection and transfer bin haulage throughout the township. Okay, I'll look for a mover for this or a mover and a seconder at the recommendation. Moved by Councillor Webb and seconded by Councillor Ellis. Question or comments around it? Um, Councillor Webb? I was just going to add if we could give direction to, I guess, because this is contract is up this year that we start looking for next year. I'm, that's what will happen, I would think. Yes, through you. I don't, yeah, I don't know if, he did, if Pete does that automatically or if we needed to give direction, but you might as well get on the ball now, so. Yes, through you, Mayor Martin, um, as in discussions with uh, Waste Connections, it sounded like this was the more cost-effective way as of right now, and then we'll have to retender. Uh, this is our last extension year uh, for the contract, yes. Okay. Uh, Councillor Ellis, go ahead. Well, just a quick comment. Um, through the county, the cost-sharing initiatives that the county is working on, uh, sharing responsibilities, um, has the Northern Transfer Station um, been part of uh, any of the discussions there with the county? Uh, I direct that to you, Mr. Mayor, as an official. Yeah. No, I don't think any of the individual, it's just uh, basically right now, mostly it's been on the recycling end of things. Um, as far as the garbage side of it, uh, no, we're still working on that. It's really early there. Uh, one last question, uh, probably through, uh, through Mr. Mayor to Bob and Gioni. The uh, survey that we put out for rural uh, pickup, has that been completed or has that ended now? Yes, through you, Mayor Martin, uh, to Councillor Ellis. Yes, that survey ended late August, so we will be bringing a report to our next council meeting to summarize the findings and determine any action steps going forward. Thank you. Okay, any other questions or comments? Okay, I'll call the question. All in favor of the motion? And that's carried. Next, we have uh, approval to connect water and sewer system on Old Norwood Road. Uh, Peter? Yes, through you, Mayor Martin, to the members of council. Uh, we've had a um, a resident that's uh, planning and building on uh, at the 605 Old Nord Road um, next uh, year, and we'd just like to get the approval for the water and sewer connection. Okay. What's council's thoughts? Councillor Ellis, go ahead. You're moving the motion. You're muted there. So. Questions for you, Mr. Mayor, to Peter. The, um, the tender that was open. <laughs> Uh, if I recall, there was a um, bit of a concern about the, the cost of the, the tender that was turned in. And I thought, if my memory serves me correct, that we were going to retender that. But the report shows that we're just taking some of the costs out of the tender. Um, I think that item, that's the next item, Councillor Ellis. Well, maybe I jumped ahead too far here. Yeah, this is for the uh, uh, new connection of water and sewer on Old Norwood Road. So, apologies, I my apologies, I jumped ahead too far. That's good. Um, okay, so uh, I do. I'll look for a mover and a seconder, and then I'll open up for questions if there is one. Uh, Deputy Mayor Giro, you're moving the recommendation. To you, Mr. Mayor, I'm moving your recommendation. Okay, and Councillor Webb, you're seconding the motion. Okay, now I'll open it up for questions or comments. It's good to see somebody else connecting. Uh, 
Go ahead, Deputy Mayor Carroll. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Peter, the, the water and sewer is actually, if I'm thinking straight, uh, is actually at the property line of the neighbor, right? Yes, through you, Mayor Martin, the, uh, the sanitary sewer is right at the property line to the neighbor to the west there. So we will we'll have a slight angle, but it is definitely possible, correct. And the water main is on the north side. So there'll be a, probably an open cut to connect to the water main there, yes. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Palmer, go ahead. Yeah, have we checked to see if uh, we have the availability? I know uh, talking or speaking with John Smallwood, uh, you know, things are getting pretty close on our, on our capacity, so. I, I would just kind of like an update from John to see, you know, get his opinion on, on this too, before we go ahead. I know it's only one, but I mean, there's one here, there's one there. We've, we've had quite a bit of infill in the municipality this past summer and, and the year before, bringing on, online the, uh, the, uh, the housing project on, on Smith Drive and there's, um, as of right now, I think all of the lots are full or have been sold in houses on Smith Drive. And there's some other infill being done. And I think there's a couple of, uh, of subdivision inquiries. So have we, do we have the availability before we go ahead and make, you know, I know it's only one lot, but I, I would like to know the capacity before we go ahead. Yeah, I don't see John on here, or, or at least not showing on my screen. Is he here? Okay. No, through you, Mayor Martin, no. Uh, uh, the chief building official is not on the meeting today. So we haven't, so we still have well three um, that is being used right now also. Um, so I'm sure the water must be there still, um, other than the cosmetic or the the look of it, uh, that's the only concerns we've had with it, but it's still available if we had to, I would think. So uh, do you have anything to add to this, Peter? Uh, yes, through you, Mayor Martin. Um, I, I believe we have uh, capacity for the rest of the, uh, up at Smith Drive as well. I know there are some new properties uh, that are uh, proposed or in planning stages there. Um, but I do know that, uh, the, that what was proposed up on Smith Drive, we do have a, a report back uh, from Engage in 2018, I believe it was, that uh, that uh, uh, stated that uh, those homes or new residents were going to be uh, able to be online. So um, I can uh, I can get some more research here if that's what uh, is needed, and uh, and come back with a, a report at a later date. Well, right now I have a motion for the mover and uh, for the uh, recommendation for the connection. So um, if there's any, is there any other questions with regards to this or comments? Seeing none, I'll, I'll call the question on the motion that uh, we approve the connection of this water hookup. And that's carried. Okay. Um, next we have the surface work tender. Uh, um, for Smith Drive there, uh, Peter? Yes, through you, Mayor Martin. Uh, we, uh, through Engage Engineering, uh, put a, a tender out uh, for Smith Drive um, for the asphalt um, sidewalk uh, boulevard curb. And uh, we were looking to obtain council's approval into uh, amending the, uh, the tender as the tender came in over, over budget. Um, uh, the, the, the thought behind the process of the change of the tender was to get the asphalt down for winter uh, to make it more uh, um, accessible and easy for winter maintenance, plowing and sanding. Uh, and then next year we will bring a report back in, in budget uh, for the remaining of the sidewalks and uh, boulevard and topsoil thawed work. Okay, um, Councillor Ellis, you had a question earlier with regards to this? Yeah, well that was uh, where my concern was like, 
Uh, so are we going to retender the project um, with those two items removed? Uh, through you, Mayor Martin. Uh, no, we were we were hoping the uh, council's approval today to go ahead with the tender and just remove the two items. Uh, 1.04 and 1.06 would be the sidewalk and the, the sod uh, to go ahead with the paving uh, this year. So if that was, I know you're trying to get things underway there and totally understand Peter, but uh, if that if that was re-tendered with those two items removed, um, should that not be the way we should go to see what the next tender comes in at? Yes, uh, through you, Mayor Martin, we can retender all of it, uh, the whole tender or the part, just the paving. Um, it's totally, yeah, it, it is definitely totally possible to do that. I just, we were just trying to go ahead to get the pavement done for the winter maintenance side of things, Councillor Ellis. So um, whichever way Council uh, wants to proceed is, is, is no problem. How long was the tender put out for, Peter? Uh, engage handled engage handled the entire tender. Uh, they uh, they notified uh, numerous contractors. I don't know the number off the top of my head, but it was just over two weeks, I believe, Mayor Martin. Yeah, these are short tenders we're putting out there. Uh, um, but anyways, uh, there is a recommendation here. I'll start off with: uh, Is there any movers for this recommendation? Moved by Deputy Mayor Duro and. Uh, Seconded by Councillor Pomeroy. Um, now I'll open it up for questions to, or comments with regards to, to doing the two parts here. Um, it sounds like it was put out to a, a number of contractors, which was my concern. I only seen one on there, but that's, uh, that's a good thing if it was put out there. I know everybody's busy. Uh, go ahead, Councillor Ellis. Yeah, and I think it was the time of year, like uh, the tender come in um, much higher than what we anticipated. And so I guess that was my only point was uh, if it was retendered now, uh, would we be pleasantly for surprised at the, the new tender cost? And that my other question is then the cost for item 1.04 and 1.06, uh, where, does, where does that cost come from? Peter? Uh, through you, Mayor Martin. So, Councillor Ellis, may, maybe just explain a little bit more on your question for the cost of so the, the sidewalk. The cost for those two items, 1.04 and 1.06. Yeah. The, the cost or the funding for those two projects, where does that come from? Uh, that'll be brought back into budget for 2022. Okay. So, uh, so I will, I will uh, be talking with Wendelin on that to see where and how we can fund those items. Okay. Okay. Right now it would be to, uh, to do the boulevard work. Is that right? Yes, right, right now we uh, would be just going ahead with the pavement. So lifting all the catch basins um, and doing just the pavement. And then next year we will uh, go ahead and uh, retender uh, for the sidewalk and the boulevard work, yes. Okay, all right, is there any other questions or comments? I do have a mover um, for this recommendation, a mover and a seconder for the recommendation. I'll call the question. All in favor of the motion? And that's carried. Next, it's uh, the George Street Sanitary Sewer Replacement. Yes, through you, Mayor Martin. So uh, the purpose of this report is to obtain uh, uh, Approval from council to the infrastructure program grant in order to fund the replacement of the water main on George Street. Um, if the township is successful in the grant application, uh, approval be granted to replace a sanitary sewer on George Street, which would be required funding from the township on an estimated of $350,000. Um, to, to further that, we just received an update uh, from Engage um, and there we are expecting a final draft of the grant application later today, and it uh, needs to be submitted by September 9th. Okay, this was the part of the uh, grant that wasn't covered if 
it, it's not covered in the grant for the sanitary sewers. So we'd be responsible for that. Yes. What's council's thoughts there? I'll look for a mover. Or... The motion, Mr. Mayor. Moved by Councillor Ellis and seconded by Councillor Webb. Questions, comments? Go ahead, Larry. Just a quick one. Uh, if we're successful here, uh, I believe we talked about this before, but I'm going to ask the question. The county are ready to move forward if we're successful? Yes, through you, Mayor Martin. Yes, we had a meeting uh, just last week with Peter Nielsen from the county, and it is in their budget. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So I have a mover and a seconder. I'll call the question. All in favor? And that's there. Okay. Thank you, Peter. That's uh, up there for quite a while. Thank you. Yes. Uh, okay. Next, we'll move in Ryan Ryan Andrew with regards to uh, um, installing artificial ice. Good morning, Ryan. Uh, good morning, Mayor Martin and members of council. Um, it's hard to believe it's this time of year again. We're talking about getting ice um, installation plans ready. So I don't know where the summer went, but. Uh, Anyways, uh, there's a couple of uh, things I just need to address with council today and we're seeking approval um, and uh, direction from council to uh, move forward into this year's ice installation plan and, and that for this uh, this fall. So um, the first of all is uh, I just kind of want to um, address council and see what uh, they wanted to do for an installation date. Um, I provided a couple of options. Uh, October 1st is as a normal starting year. That's typically when we would start the plant and have ice ready for the Thanksgiving weekend. Um, the second option would be to start following Thanksgiving um, weekend, uh, just to give council a little bit more time um, to uh, before we proceed with that. Um, it's important for council to keep in mind as well that it takes 10 to 14 days to, to complete the installation process. So that's kind of the, the first part of what we need to do. And then uh, it's staff's recommendation as well that we hired um, a part-time operator. Uh, this position would be an on-call basis only. Um, this is uh, typically a student's position. However, um, having some experience dealing with this uh, COVID-19 protocols and how we operate our facilities, it's uh, staff's recommendation. Uh, that we hire a part-time on-call operator to cover off in the event that our staff can't come in. Um, and the other thing is that uh, during games and tournaments, um, the, the uh, regulation and guidelines set out by uh, the province and Peterborough Public Health, uh, this would allow us to operate with the 45 minutes uh, in between rentals. Uh, it gives us, our staff, enough time to control the facility um, and sanitize uh, as required. So um, other than that, I just... Uh, there's a lot of information in the report there. Um, I also attached the facility safety plan, which is a requirement uh, that basically lists out all of uh, all of the user's responsibilities as well as the township's responsibilities. Yeah, so there is a lot to it, uh, Ryan. And uh, as far as the date of opening, um, was there a preference that you had or is it uh, um, like I know the hydro was always a big concern. We pay for the high rate of hydro for the whole month. So if you start at the middle of the month, you pay for it for the whole month or something like that. Um, but that being said, um, we were late last year uh, getting going. So, uh, um, you know, it's up to council here, but uh, um, hopefully we can have a semi-normal season. <laughs> What's council's thoughts here? Uh, uh, Councillor Ellis and Deputy Mayor Giroux. Yeah, I'm just looking at your uh, example of average ice surface rentals. Uh, Ryan, is that just a prediction of what you think you're gonna have where it shows, uh, you know, minor hawking figure skating for an example, 300 hours? Is that just a prediction or how do you establish the numbers that you have there? Uh, through you, uh, Mayor Martin, to Councillor Rosa's comment. Um, I've reached out to the clubs and we've been in communication with each other and um, that that uh, number represents what they've basically requested in terms of ice time. So I've just um, projected that over the season. And as long as they take what they're requesting as of right now, then that would 
that's that will be pretty close to what we'll bring in in, in terms of revenue. Okay, thank you, Ryan. Okay, Deputy Mayor Terrell. Sure, you, Mr. Mayor. First of all, thank you, Ryan, for your report. Um, well done. Everything is certainly in the report that we needed to know, including your safety plan for the COVID. Um, as far as the timeline goes, um, I think you're in probably a better position to figure that out than I am. If we're going to go ahead with this, then unless there is some reason why we couldn't move with option one because of the line painters might be busy or uh, something to do with building the ice two weeks sooner, something that I might not know, then if we're gonna do it, we might as well move ahead. Okay, did you wanna make that a motion, Deputy Mayor Jarrell? Yes. Okay. You're moving the recommendation that's on here, and what was the date then? To start, to start it up. Oh, it's muted there, Dave. There you go. October one, wasn't it? Okay. All right. So Deputy Mayor Duro is moving the recommendation with a start date, starting the plan up October one. Do I have a seconder for that? Councillor Webb. Okay, any questions or comments? Go ahead, Councillor Ellis. It's a question for Ryan. Uh, so uh, two weeks to get the ice usable. Um, do you anticipate ice rentals at that point? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, no, we've... I've been in communication with all our adult recreation leagues. Um, recently met with the figure skating club last week and uh, minor hockey has indicated that they'll be ready to start um, as early as Thanksgiving weekend. Um, the only reason I put in a couple options was because there is a slight decline in the amount of hours requested. So I just thought I'd provide that option to council if they, you know, be, because we are a little lighter on rentals than we normally are. Uh, I thought I'd give them the option to maybe start a little bit later. Um, having said that, we're, where um, our facility is ready to go and we're, we're ready to start up October 1st as long as uh, council wants to move forward with that. Well, that was, uh, that was my only concern. We go early as you're re uh, requesting or that we've decided. Uh, if it's in early and not going to be used, then my thoughts would have been your second option would have been probably more suitable. Okay, Deputy Mayor Jarrell and then Councillor Webb. Second comment through you, Mr. Mayor. I considered the, the option two, uh, the second week. The thing of it is, unless the hydro has changed, we were always told that if we start, no matter where we start in the month, we get billed from the first of the month. So if we start early and if there is any hiccups, and we've had lost them, and it gives us a two week, kind of a two week period to solve those problems and have good ice by Thanksgiving weekend. That was the reasoning behind it. And I stuck to my motion. Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Webb, go ahead and then- Yeah, I was just, I was just gonna say, it's, it's better to get the ice in so these groups can get up and running. Because over this year and last year, we have we have people in this area that are going to other communities because their ice and their facilities are up and running. All right. Yeah. So I think it's better for us to put it in as soon as possible so we can help our local organizations get the kids out and get up and running like they need to. Okay, thank you. Councillor Palmer, go ahead. Yeah, I agree with Councillor Webb. The, um, the only other thing that bothered me is, are we going to be back into a pandemic here, you know, um, and how much, you know, we're, we're going to have the arena open less time according to uh, what we've been told here and we're, we're want to hire another man. Um, most of the ice time would be, you know, in the evenings. So I, I can't see why would we need another, another part-time person for to help and we have you know three people of our own um 
and and the arena is going to be open less less time. So that's that's what bothers me is is um, you know the arena don't need to be open in the mornings or the afternoons if it's not being used. They utilize our help when we need it. Yeah, and I think the other part is just if there's tournaments and things like that, that, that that's when the on-call person might be needed. But go ahead, Councillor Webb. Yeah, I was just, I had a question about the 45 minute between rentals policy, where that come from? Because it's not outlined in the Peterborough Public Health guidelines anywhere. And I know other, other rinks are going one rental after the other. So I'm just wondering why we would have a 45 minute break in between our rentals. Uh, I'll answer that through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I don't know of any rink in Peterborough County that's doing back-to-back -back rentals right now. Um, I think, if anything, we're a little bit quicker turnaround than the rest because um, uh, through our manager's meeting with uh, Peterborough Public Health that facilitates that, um, arenas are taking one hour in between rentals to sanitize uh, the facilities. Um, some of the larger centers like City of Peterborough, where they have um, six to eight dress rooms, might be able to accommodate a shorter turnaround time, but with a small facility with four dress rooms available. Um, there's only eight uh, participants allowed per dress room. So we're basically giving out like all four dress rooms to the users. So we have to sanitize in, be in between each rental, um, also have to uh, do the lobby and the stands and everything. So uh, that 45 minutes in between rentals just allows staff to sanitize, disinfect it to the regulation that we're that we have to adhere to so that we're allowed to rent it out for the next hour or so. Okay, yeah. that's news to me because I was in Norwood yesterday and they were having rentals one right after the other. So I don't know if maybe the policy's changed or maybe they're one of these bigger centers that that you're talking about, but I am not aware of that at all. I'm just getting I'm just relaying questions that are asked to me as to why you know our rules are different from what everybody else in Peterborough County is doing. So Actually, I just want to point out that that was a big topic of, of our meetings was that uh, all of the arena managers got together this year and, and made consistent rules so that if you were visiting any arena within Peterborough County, they, all the rules would basically be the same. So that would be, I can look into that, but that would be news to me. That that would be something that has changed since um, a couple of weeks ago when we, when we last met as a group. Thank you, Ryan. All right. So we do have a mover and a seconder for this recommendation. Is there any other questions or comments? If not, I'll call the question. All in favor of the motion? And that's carried. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you. Um, next on the agenda here is a uh, quick response, uh, Bianca. Good morning, Mayor Martin and members of council. Uh, the purpose of my report today is to seek permission to design and implement quick response codes on township correspondence and property. So a quick response code is a two-dimensional code that embeds large amounts of information and it's on the rise in the communities surrounding us and it allows residents and people to receive information immediately. So some common uses of these codes are to direct, directly link to a web page to give audience access to all social media links for a business, send event invitations, watch a YouTube video, and you can also save an event on your smartphone directly followed by further information. So the township could benefit with the use of these codes by putting them on tax and utility bills. And so residents can scan the code and directly go to the web page that directs them how to make a payment. And with bylaw signs for no dogs allowed or parking. You can put a weather resistant sticker and residents can scan that and get the bylaw directly to their smartphone for further information. And so I attached four interactive examples to this report and invited people to test them out. So residents and individuals can do this by scanning it with their smartphone, either directly with the camera and if that's not possible, you just download it, a free app and it opens it right on your smartphone. So there's, there's two options. There's a free code generator, which gives you the standard features like linking to a website. And then there's an annual plan, which would allow staff to 
track the analytics and also provide information for council uh, where people are scanning it, how many people are scanning it, and even what kind of device is being used. So I have a quick video I'd like to share with you all to provide some information and um, instruction on how to use this. So just one moment. That's, okay. really, that's really good. It's, uh, these things are really popular out there. I see them around on some of the signs in the parks in Duro Dummer. Um, yeah, it's a great way to get the information out there. Um, I became really familiar with it on my trip down east because you couldn't get in a restaurant without scanning that and hoping that your green arrow came up that you were that you were okay to go in. So um, we had that all through the down east. So. Um, it's great. It's an up and coming thing and I'm glad we're on top of it. So um, I'll open up to council here. Go ahead, Councillor Ellis. Uh, I'm sure, I'm sure uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, I'm sure council will remember hearing me say new ways of doing business for improved and efficiencies. Efficiencies not always reflect just dollar signs. And here is a great example. Uh, just uh, quick access, easier access to our municipality. And uh, my hat's off. I'm sure, Bianca, you were a great part of this. So um, great work. I think it's a step forward for HBM. Thank you. All right. So I'll look for what's council's thoughts here. I'd look for a motion. Councillor Webb, do you want to move that recommendation? Okay. Um, do I have a seconder? I'll gladly second that, Mr. Mayor. Okay, Councillor Ellis is seconding that. And Deputy Mayor Drill, go ahead. Question on the motion. Uh, which plan are we plan? I see there's three plans here, Bianca. If I'm looking at things right. Yes, there's three options. And so the, the middle plan would allow us to make two, 20 unique QR codes that we could edit, track, um, and get all the features from the first basic plan. So if we started with this Bianca and it didn't work, we could upgrade? Yes. Great. Thank you, so, Dave, I didn't see that. So, so is, that, is that the plan that the motion referred to? Yeah. So. Um, Hart, which which one did you want to put in that motion there? Which one you? I guess the standard motion is that the one that she said. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the standard uh, and Larry, is that okay with seconding the standard? Well, and I would presume as we work through it, um, 
that uh, Bianca would come back with a recommendation to take into consideration the third step probably. But, uh, all yeah. good. All right then. So I have a mover and a seconder for the standard uh, plan. And uh, is there any other questions or comments? If not, I'll call a question. All in favor? And that's carried. Thank you, Bianca. Thank you. Okay. Um, next here, uh, we have the emergency COVID funding grant applications that uh, came forward at uh, the last economic development meeting. Bob, did you want to take this one? Yes, through you, Mayor Martin. Um, and just before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge the deputy clerk for her presentation. It was her first time ever presenting to council. So I just want to acknowledge her initiative and she was brave enough to step forward. She did a great job. Um, I, with respect to COVID funding, there was an economic development meeting took place on August 31st. The economic development committee is recommending uh, nine businesses and groups in the community to receive COVID funding. Okay. All right then, uh, Councillor Ellis, go ahead. Yes, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, I would gladly uh, move the recommendation for to approve the funding. And how soon would some of those uh, recipients receive the funding, Bob? Yes, through you, Mayor Martin, we can uh, we will process checks in our next check run. So I would say within two weeks through our normal accounts payable uh, system, and then the payments can be out there. Thank you. Okay, so I have that moved by Councillor Ellis. Do I have a seconder for the motion? Councillor Pomeroy? Questions, comments? All in favor of the motion? And that's carried. Um, next, uh, we have uh, the vaccination clinic there, Bob. Yes, through you, Mayor Martin. Um, an original vaccination clinic uh, was held by Piro Public Health uh, at the community center in, in August, August 18th. Uh, it was deemed to be a great success by Piro Public Health. We had 117 participants that day receive vaccinations. Piro Public Health is coming back uh, to Havelock for a second clinic, which will be held on September 23rd. So we ask everyone who's uh, participating in our meeting today and everyone who might be watching uh, to please help spread the word. Uh, this is great news for, uh, for Havelock and we need everyone's help to get a good crowd out there again. All right then, yeah, I, I did hear some good things about the last one there and I did go over and take a look and uh, it was well, lots of participation. So, um, so I'll look for a motion here to um, go with the recommendation that we hold a clinic on the 23rd of September. Moved by Councillor Webb, seconded by Councillor Pomeroy. Questions, comments? Mr. Councillor Ellis, go ahead. Mr. Mayor, is that going to be advertised on our info, information board, Bob? Yes, through you, Mayor Martin. Uh, once again, we will use uh, all the same tools uh, that were used the first time. So it will be on our digital board on Highway 7, it will be on our website and through social media. We will also be emailing it to our uh, community ratepayer groups and to the business community. So we're just, again, asking everyone to spread the word. That's good. Okay, so I have a mover and a seconder. Any other questions or comments? I'll call a question, all in favor? And that's carried, thank you. Um, Next uh, is something that we talked about at the last meeting or a couple of meetings ago with regards to the pickup trucks and the distribution throughout the um, staff. And one of the suggestions were that we set up a committee. Um, there's two things we can do here. We can either set up, have a counselor on the committee or we can ask staff to continue to uh, bring back a report on what's needed with regards to vehicles and uh, how we're moving forward in the future. So what's council's thoughts here? Deputy Mayor Giroux, go ahead, and then Councillor Pomeroy. All uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. I do believe I made a motion to the effect that there was to be a councillor, perhaps, set on that committee, um, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, yeah, I put my name forward, along with any okay. other councillor. 
Okay. All right then. So, uh, Councilor Pomeroy, go ahead. Yeah, I would also like to sit on that committee because uh, probably a year and a half or two years ago, I sat down with Peter and Wendland and uh, we um, tried to juggle the trucks around so that there wouldn't be two of them, you know, required in one year. And the other thing that I requested was um, a sheet on, you know, what it costs for each truck you know, so you can track it. Don't just say the trucks wore out, you know, it's, it's uh, time for a change. Um, let's see what it costs, you know, for, for to keep these trucks on the road. And uh, I, I don't know, there's, there's just some small tweaks that we have to fix. And uh, to me, there's, there's uh, a lack of information and we gotta, we gotta get that in line. Is, is that funny or is it not? I can hear a bell ringing somewhere, so I better pick up most of that. So, um, okay, so we have uh, um, the question was about having a uh, counselor. If council's okay to have two representatives on there, I'm hearing two names there, so um, I'll look for a motion. Uh, Councillor Webb, go ahead. Yeah, I'll just make a motion that, that we have uh, Deputy Mayor Giro and Councillor Pomeroy sit on that committee. Okay. Uh, second motion, Mr. Mayor. Okay, moved by Councillor Webb, seconded by Councillor Ellis that we have two members, and that would be Deputy Mayor Giroux and Councillor Pomeroy sitting on this committee. And I'll leave it up to you, Bob, on how it uh, moves forward. It sounds like it could be a lengthy one. So, um, yeah, I don't think it'll be ready for this year's budget by the sounds of it. So, um, anyways, okay, we have a mover and a seconder. I'll call the question. All in favor? And that's carried. Okay, um, next uh, number 11 here is the, uh, the voting procedures for the municipal election. Uh, Bob, go ahead. Uh, yes, through you, Mayor Martin. So the next municipal election will be held on October 24 of 2022. So planning has now begun. And the first step in the process is to determine, to determine the voting process. So uh, last time we successfully implemented electronic voting, internet and telephone. We did include paper ballots uh, on voting day. So the options before council today are to do the same as last time or just proceed with electronic voting, internet and telephone. Okay, Councillor Webb, go ahead. Yeah, I'd just like to make a motion that we keep it the same as the last election to provide uh, an outlet for those who, uh, don't aren't up on internet voting give them a, a place to physically come and vote all right then so move her to her uh, option two and seconded by councillor pomeroy questions or comments deputy mayor Drew, go ahead uh through you uh mayor martin i froze up there for a, a moment and i didn't get all of that but uh I assume we're going to go with the recommendation. Is that what I heard? Option two, the recommendation to do the same as last time. Yeah. Is, okay. that, is that correct? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions or comments? All in favor of the motion? And that's carried. Thank you. And that's the end of the uh, staff reports for information. Um, I don't have any correspondence on this uh, agenda. So our next uh, business here is uh, committee liaison reports. And uh, Councillor Webb, you've been busy. Um, you have a number of things listed here. You're muted. Oh, Bob, go ahead. All right, through you, Mayor Martin. Uh, County Council report prior okay. to committees, yeah. Okay. All yeah. right, I, I don't have anything to report. I was away for that meeting. So um, go ahead, Deputy Mayor Terrell. Through you, Mr. Chair. I was also, uh, wasn't able to attend the County Council, but I, what I did do was uh, follow up on the YouTube County Council meeting. And um, 
I would encourage council, all council or anyone who is watching our Zoom meeting to log on to the Peterborough County Council meetings. The last one was on August the 25th. And um, they are good meetings, lots of interesting stuff, but I did not, I was not able to attend that meeting. And uh, therefore, I'm not going to report. I watched it, but I'm not going to report on it because I wasn't there. Yeah, and I watched it from down down east, and uh, and there was some. I did send some comments over to uh, about the short term uh, rentals that was discussed at the meeting. So, and it's also going to be discussed again at this week. I think. Uh, tomorrow's meeting too. So um, the county is working on that. And hopefully we can come up with something that uh, we do it together instead of just individual townships, come up with a solution for the concerns throughout the county on short-term rentals. So um, anyways, uh, so I'll move into the, uh, oh, go ahead, Dave. Uh, one thing, uh, thank you for that, Mayor Martin. One thing to, to bear in mind, we all want to be on the same page in Peterborough County, but it should be noted that each municipality, not the county, is, is responsible for their own bylaws. So there could be some different ones, but we hope we're all on the same page. But yeah. HBM makes their procedures and bylaws, and so does the rest of them. So just to be noted that they won't make our decisions, we will be making our own. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, so we'll move into the uh, other reports here. And Councillor Webb, you have a number of things here uh, from your committee. Yeah, a couple of maths and uh, property meetings. Um, just an update. Uh, things are moving along nicely. Um, Ryan, the manager of Parks and Recreation, is uh, keeping everything moving. We're just waiting on. Um, we've got approval from one of our Indigenous partners uh, in Hiawatha, but we're still waiting for the approval from, I believe it's Curve Lake. So once we get that, um, we'll be in there and uh, digging and making trails. So, and hopefully we can have that in the next week or two. Um, economic development, we had a meeting, uh, we just discussed there um, approving uh, the COVID funding for nine local businesses. Um, we're also looking at uh, reworking the CIP. Um, there'll probably be a report coming to council next meeting or the first meeting in October in terms of uh, some suggestions in terms of uh, amending the CIP. And um, another thing um, that we talked about economic development is um, a township signage policy. So I think we'll, we will either have uh, a report or a delegation come to make a presentation about a new signage strategy for, uh, for the township in the next, uh, I'd say probably within the next month. So. And uh, the last item, the tourism strategy chart that is included in there. I just wanted to include that. That's something the economic development uh, committee has been looking at for a month or two. I wanted, count, I wanted to be in there so the council could have a look at it. This is something that was done, I believe, in 2018. And I know the last year and a half to two years has been a blur for most people. So some of these things get forgotten about. But uh, there's a lot of good recommendations. There was a lot of work put into this. There was a lot of work... Uh, public consultation done and there's a lot of ideas here in this report that I think um, if, if we examine it and, and do it properly you know these are things that will really move the town forward so what we did quickly um, I worked with staff with the deputy clerk if you look on the right uh, the right column the Everything on the left is kind of the goals and it works you through in terms of how we can work through these. And in the far right column, we tried to identify which of these steps um, we as a township have already started. Some we haven't, some um, we're, we're quite involved in. But as I said, I just wanted the council to have a look at that as more of a refresher to know where we are um, and what's still left to be done. But um, I know quite often we get in these discussions about, you know, What's the next step? What, what do we need to do? If you look through this document, um, there's a whole lot of suggestions here that were recommended to us, you know, say almost three or four years ago now. So I just like everybody to have a look at that and um, maybe consider that in terms of where, when we're moving forward here the next year. So that's it. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, then we had minutes here from uh, June 16th meeting. Um, 
Look for a motion to receive those minutes. Moved by Councillor Ellis. Seconded by Councillor Pomeroy. Questions, comments? Councillor Ellis, go ahead. Just a quick comment through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as a member of the uh, Madison Property Committee, I um, asked uh, Bianca if it was possible for her to YouTube our, our meetings. So um, going forward, our next meeting, um, it will be recorded and uh, put on YouTube for anybody that likes to follow the progress of the Madison Property uh, Committee. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, then that's something the committee, I guess, has talked about. And um, so you're requesting that it come out on a, on a recording, so. Yeah, they're um, gonna, Bianca's going to record them, and it'll be uh, available for the general public um, to view. And it's it's basically to kind of uh, drive a little more interest and keep everybody looking and being part of. Okay, um, Councillor Webb, go ahead. You're muted there. Oh, okay. All right then. So, Deputy Mayor Durrell, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Do you have a date for that meeting? There isn't a, there isn't a date for the next meeting that I'm aware of. Is there a Councillor Hart Webb? As of now, we haven't set a date because um, at the last meeting we were hoping to, our, our, we were hoping to have our next meeting on site um, while the trails were starting to be laid. So we're, and as I said, uh, we're hoping to have that approval date either last week or this week. So. What, if we get the approval, I've been told drain will be in there pretty quickly, and then um, we'll set a date after that. But ideally, the plan was to have the next meeting in there. As time goes on, if we don't get this approval, probably I'm looking mid to late September. So, okay. just one last thing, uh, I direct it to Ryan. I know we're waiting on our Indigenous friends uh, at our meeting. We talked uh, possibly because we weren't getting uh, quick responses uh, uh, mail wise. I was wondering, we had talked about visiting directly to those folks to try to speed some of the things up because as we know, we can't do too much until we get their uh, blessings. Okay, so Ryan. If you've given that thought to, uh, to physically go talk to them. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, at this point, I think we should still maintain communication through formal letter or email. Um, but if if uh, we don't hear back within a reasonable timeline, then we can uh, look at that issue and maybe we can discuss that with uh, Bob as well, um, what his thoughts might be moving forward. But uh, I think at this time, I think it's uh, still acceptable to, to just kind of wait um, for a response out of them. Um, the, just with the summer being over now and things kind of, uh, you know, coming into the fall, I anticipate we'll hear from them uh, here shortly. So, um, but certainly, certainly if we don't, we'll, we can uh, formulate a plan. But uh, in terms of physically showing up in person, um, I'm not sure where I sit on that at this point. Sure, uh, sure uh, you, Mr. Mayor, again, I, I think Ian had some good input at our last meeting regarding that. Um, Anyway, I'll leave it with you. Thank you. Okay, so so I have a mover and a seconder to receive the minutes. Uh, all in favor of the motion? And that's carried. Okay, next, uh, Councillor Pomeroy with regards to library board minutes from June 17th. Um, we all received those. Uh, is there any other comments with regards to that, Barry? No, no other comments. Uh, I missed the um, the last meeting here, as we had a, a death in our in our family, so I wasn't there, and and I haven't gotten in touch with uh, the light or with Robbie or anyone to find out what went on. So, okay, nothing to add. All right, thank you. So I'll look for a motion to receive those minutes. Moved by Councillor Webb, seconded by, do you have a seconder? Councillor Ellis, all in favor? 
and that's carried. Okay, next, and mine's the usual in there with conference calls, and there hasn't been too many conference calls since the election's been called. Uh, everything's kind of gone quiet as far as those one-on-ones, so, uh, um, and I was away for a week, so uh, don't have much to report for the this uh, activity report. Uh, so next is, uh, I'll look for a motion to receive all the, uh, all the updates there from Councillor Activity, moved by Councillor Webb, Seconded by Deputy Mayor Duro. All in favor? And that's carried. Next, I'll move into new business. Or no, sorry, oral notice of motion or uh, um, written notice of motion. Is there any motions to come forward here? I don't have any written. Okay. Um, next is new business. Um, and I'll just get caught up here. Um, the one thing I had on here for new business was strategic plan, and, and that's came out of some of the discussions we've had around grants and not being prepared to uh, um, staff not having any direction from us because we didn't do a strategic plan this term. Um, and our we did that, uh, what's it called there, POB that we did, it was kind of a, a priority list, and, and it's kind of outdated now, normally with strategic strategic plan, you'd be updating it uh, uh, yearly and, and staff would have a good idea when these grants come forward on what council's priorities were. So what some do right now, they're updating them to go into the next term of council. So the next term of councils would know um, what we were thinking um, this term of council and it just gives them a starting point, uh, whether they carry on with it or not is, is up to the next council, but uh, um, I just thought that we should have a discussion here today, whether we wanted to do a strategic plan to finish out this term, or you can try and do another uh, priority list. But I think it would help staff when these grants come forward to know what council's thoughts are, where our priorities are to, uh, to get these things in a, in a proper time. Uh, usually it's a rush to get it done. And, by the time you wait for a meeting uh, to discuss it, we, uh, um, you know, we're we're using time that could be used to prepare these uh, these grant applications. So, what's council's thoughts on uh, on having a strategic plan this fall um, to finish out the year? It can be a simple one, but uh, go ahead, Councilor Pomeroy. Yeah, I don't know about a strategic plan, but we all sat down and put our heads together on what we wanted done. And maybe if we started to, or finished cleaning up the plate on some of the important ones and added to it for a new council, you know, in, in the next year, but we seem to get our priorities, but we don't follow through with all of them. And, uh, if we, if we don't, they're just gonna go back on the list. Don't matter whether it's a strategic plan or whoever does it, but who knows better than you know the present council on how to try to clean up what we can before we turn it over to a new council. Um, I, I would like to, you know, they're, they're gonna have a learning experience as it is, and it's quite a curve. So I would like to clean up what we have and we, we got grants out there that, that haven't even been started to work on. And uh, it's very discouraging when you see that, that uh, nothing is moving forward. So, you know, we don't matter what council it is, if you don't move forward with a grant, you're, uh, you're beat. So anyway, that's, that's my thought. Yeah, we had a strategic plan with the county and it was so well done and we used to do them with the township and, and that's your roadmap for the term of council. We didn't do it and what we did was, like you say, it, was, it wasn't it was done very well and uh, we haven't been following it. And that's why we're where we are now. Um, I did ask uh, staff to prepare a document to show us uh, all the grants we applied for and where we are with them as far as how the, some we were successful, some we weren't, but since this term of council started, I would have to say we've at least applied for 10 or 12, maybe more grants. Uh, and, uh, and we've been successful on most of them, um, but it's just, there was no real direction from council this term 
as far as uh, you know what staff needed to do to get us through this term. So any other townships I've talked to, um, they don't know how we did it without a strategic plan because that's 101 of council to, to have a strategic plan to use to get through it. But uh, um, so whatever it is and whatever we wanna call it, we do need something to finish the term. And if it's something simple, um, we don't have to, like normally you go to the public and you find out what they're looking for too. Um, I think we're past that right now, but like you say, maybe we need to prepare a document that uh, shows what we were looking for this term, try and make the best of what we had, um, the document that we did do at the beginning of the term and uh, clean it up a little bit. Maybe that is the, the only solution to finish this. So we have one year left, so, um, so um, that is an option. So um, Bob, do you have anything to add to this or? Yeah, through you, Mayor Martin, um, as requested, staff will be bringing a report to the next council meeting to outline the number of grants that have been applied for and the success rate that we have had. Okay, um, thank you. Councillor Ellis, go ahead. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, um, I agree. I think at this stage in the game um, to create a plan to finish out this term uh, is probably not the direction to go, but get the list as Councillor Pomeroy has indicated, uh, the list of things that are not yet completed or uh, items we're focused on to get completed by before the end of our term. Um, when we speak about grants, um, some municipalities have uh, a staff member that's totally dedicated to grants. They search, apply, and I know we have staff that if we find a grant, then the paperwork's done. But other municipalities uh, totally focus on grants. And from what I'm told, they, they benefit from it because the, it pays that staff member by applying and getting grants for the municipality. And I think we're, we're, as we all know, we're, we're strugg struggling at times, we're missing them. We find the grant comes out, well, who's gonna do all the footwork to get the grant in place? Yes, we've been successful, but it's a scramble for staff. Um, as well, each department should have uh, their lead person uh, with a department uh, shovel ready list of items that, that if a grant comes forward, that they're ready. Uh, so I'd like to make a motion that we ask staff to come back to our council with a plan to implement a staff person that would look after grants and have um, a prepared plan for, for applying for grants, uh, looking for and applying for as well uh, as I mentioned, each department should have a staff, the head of their staff, with a list of things, as a, Peter in a, our Good Roads Department should have a list of shovel-ready projects. So if a grant comes av available, there's no scramble trying to apply for the grant with information. So I'm going to put that out there for Council's consideration. I just think we're missing the boat here at times, and I know, like you say, we have applied and been successful but it's a scramble that staff have to go through in order to do that. So I'm gonna put that out there for council's consideration. And if we're all on board, then I would make that motion. Okay then, um, so, so Councillor Ellis is moving that we uh, have a dedicated staff person. I just don't know who's, we don't have enough staff to do it, but uh, um, Councillor Pomeroy, go ahead. Yeah, I think, uh... If I'm not mistaken, Bob has uh, give that task to Leah, and she's taken it very seriously. She's just just started it here this while well, in COVID, and uh, so far she she's done a, a a wonderful job. And I and I think it's you know she she's aware of all departments, so we 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 do. You know, we are very successful in our grant applications, 
And and I have to agree with you, Larry. Like every everyone that you know, like Peter, for instance. And Peter is working with Leah. I know that for a fact, um, which is one of our major ones. And uh, she has been on top of it so far. So I I think she's doing a wonderful job. And I, I thank Bob for turning this over to Leah because she's taking it seriously. Okay. Larry, go ahead. Just, just one Speaking last comment. Yes. Uh, one last comment. I understand and I know Leah's involved and yes, doing a good job there for us. But I, I would ask Bob Leone, is that part of her assignment to be searching and looking for grants or do we just hand her uh, a grant application and let her do all the footwork. Through you, Mayor Martin. Um, I thank you, Councillor Pomeroy, for your comments, and to Councillor Ellis. Uh, as we put forward the restructuring plan, the executive assistant position was created to search out and complete grant applications. So training is underway. Uh, she has undertaken that task, and she's been doing a great job so far. But there is a transition period as we go through this, um, and we are definitely working towards that. So yes, the answer to your question is yes, to search out and complete grant applications. And these grant applications can be complex, so they do require some technical information, whether it's from public works or parks and recreation or, or whatever the details are. So typically, team members work together uh, we are asking each uh, manager from each department to create a priority list, which we intend to bring to budget uh, to prioritize projects on a go forward basis. Uh, and I think that will help us uh, going forward to keep this in a more, uh, a more formalized and structured pattern. Well, that, that's all good news for council. And so I wasn't totally aware of all of that. I knew Leah was working on helping fill out grants, but uh, that uh, sounds very encouraging. Thank you, Bob. So it sounds like so that that motion that you're putting forward, Larry. It sounds like it's already being done. So if you want to withdraw that, through you, Mr. Mayor, I'll resend that motion. Okay, thank you. Um, so, anyways, the uh, the thing here, I think, is what I'm hearing, Bob, is uh, maybe if we could direct staff to uh, dig out the. Uh, priority list that we had and try and see where we're at with it and give us an update and maybe moving forward you can uh, try and clean it up and and finish off what we what we had passed at the beginning of the term some stuff has probably already been dealt with and uh and can be taken off the list but it would help us to finish out things here so okay i'll get a motion there that we uh, that we ask staff to uh dig out the priority list and uh and bring back a report to council. Moved by Councillor Pomeroy and seconded by Councillor Webb. Any questions or comments around that? Go ahead, Deputy Mayor Giroux. Thank you, Mayor Martin. Um, I'd just like to point out once again that we are down to two staff members, so. Yeah. Let's not burden everybody too much here. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, all in favor of the motion, and that's carried. Thank you. Okay, uh, Barry, you have something on here listed as uh, backflow preventer. I know we talked about this with John a couple of years ago. I don't know if you ever dealt with it or not, but it's a good reminder. Oh, uh, well, it's been longer than two years, Jim, but <laughs> it's uh, when we started building new houses in, in town and we need a bylaw for to put backflow pre, uh, preventers on, on the sewage line so that if there's ever a problem, it doesn't back up into everyone's basement. And so far, John has done due diligence with, with anyone that has, has, has built a house for to have the uh, plumber put on a backflow, back, the, uh, backflow preventer, but in reality, if they said, no, we don't want one, uh, we, we, we got no leg to stand on. So I would just like a bylaw, have a bylaw drawn up that we uh, include the backflow preventer. So it's legal for 
our building department for to uh, have it installed. Okay, is that how it works then, Bob? That uh, we do that through a bylaw, or is that a building code thing? Through you, Mayor Martin, we will bring forward a bylaw uh, to just clarify the rules so that everyone knows exactly what's expected. Okay. So moved by Councillor Pomeroy that we uh, direct staff to create a bylaw with regards to backflow preventer. Uh, Second the motion, Mr. Mayor. Seconded by Councillor Ellis. Questions or comments with regards to the motion? All in favor? And that's carried. Okay, is there anything else under uh, um, new business? That's all I had listed here. If there's nothing here, uh, I can come forward at the next meeting. We can move into bylaws. Um, our first bylaw here is to authorize the mayor and clerk into winter maintenance agreement with MCON. I'll look for Mr. Mayor. Moved by Councillor Ellis and seconded by Councillor Pomeroy, or Councillor Webb, sorry. All in favor? And that's carried. Our next bylaw is to authorize the mayor and clerk to enter into an Ontario transfer payment agreement uh, with Her Majesty the Queen uh, to re represent the Minister of Infrastructure for the ICIP grant. Let's just make it simple there. Uh, I'll look for a motion to uh, move by Councillor Webb, seconded by Deputy Mayor Giro. All in favor? And that's carried. And our next is uh, with regards to our dentist and the uh, lease agreement that's been around a while, and it's to authorize uh, the lease agreement with uh, Vip and Grover with regards to the dental office over there. Look for a motion for that. Not... Make a motion, Mr. Mayor. Moved by Councillor Ellis. Seconder? No seconder. Okay. Um, are you seconding that, Councillor Webb? Okay. All in favor of motion? Uh, okay, carry. All right then. Our next uh, bylaw here is the confirming bylaw for today's meeting. Uh, moved by Councillor Webb. Seconder? Second motion. All in favor? And that's carried. And I'm looking for adjournment. Barry had his hand up there. And uh, your seconder, Councillor Webb. All in favor. And that's carried. Thanks.